Good luck. Got it. So are we ready to go, Will? We are ready to go. Peru, here we come. So um, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Will, for having me here virtually this time. I would truly love to be in that conference room of yours uh, this, uh, this evening, but um, here I am virtually instead. Um, over the years, for those, I, I can't, I can't see everybody's hands um, on online. But from the people who are behind Will, there, how many people have travelled with the chamber before? Can you put your hand up? Oh, I see virtually all of you. My goodness, great. So, so Will uh, and his team over the years has done a wonderful, wonderful job in creating international awareness programs to vibrant interesting uh, destinations throughout the world. And in 2022, uh, nothing has changed. We're heading to Peru, a land of adventure, a land of surprise, and one of my favorite destinations of anywhere to travel. There's nothing like Peru. The food is wonderful. Uh, the people are warm and friendly. Um, the history spans centuries, and the land itself is is staggering and and beautiful. Yeah, um, you uh, maximize your screen so that we can see the the presentation. You can't see the presentation. It's it's not it's not full on the screen. So maybe you can oh make maybe it dropped off. How about that? That's much better. <laughs> okay, good, good. Maybe it dropped off a little bit. So I tell you what, let me just say to you, did it just move forward? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to go back again then. So it's okay. working fully. Great. So nothing really that my slides can, can, can really prepare you for the adventure you've got uh, ahead of you should you decide to head to Peru with a, a, the Chamber and Aventor World. It is purely a spectacular, spectacular destination. So, but I'm gonna try my best to, to de depict what you're going to see, what you're going to experience. Through the uh, aid of slides, we're going to see Lima, Machu Picchu, Cusco, um, the Sacred Valley. Um, we're going to go across to Puno uh, and Lake Titicaca. And we're going to see the hotels that we're staying in along the program itself. And um, yes, have a wonderful, wonderful introduction to this program. For those people, thank you, Will. For those people who are online, if I may ask, um, use the chat feature. If you go to the, if you put your mouse to the top of the screen, a toolbar will drop down. And on that toolbar, you'll see right about the center left, the, 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 uh, an icon for chat. And, and that uh, will then uh, allow you to type away any questions that you might have as we go through the presentation. Um, I promise at the end of the presentation not to leave without answering all chat questions and all verbal questions from everybody in the conference room right there in the chamber building. So I look forward to that as we get through. But if I could ask a favor, if you could hold, uh, please, if you're chatting away, please, as when you remember the, uh, when you think of the question, type it in there. But if you're in the chamber room itself, uh, please, could you hold your questions to the end? Because by the time we arrive at that section, I am sure that the majority of your questions will already have been answered. Great to be back here again. Great to be partnering with uh, the Chamber and, and fellow travelers uh, on, on this 2020, October 2022 trip. So um, this particular program, October the 2022 20, through to uh, October the 31st is the main program. The main program being Lima, Cusco, uh, Agua Calientes um, and, 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 and back to Cusco. Uh, we'll talk more about the extension in a moment. So it works 
really, really well. Um, the way that this we've been operating this program for many, many years, and it brings forth a whole host of different uh, experiences as you go from uh, various uh, uh, climates uh, and in various levels of uh, sea level. Um, and yes, wonderful destination. Before we head out to Peru, though, let's talk a little bit about who Aventura World is. Now, many of you may have been to one of my presentations when I've been stood right in front of that big screen TV that you're all looking at. Um, but let's re-refresh. So Aventura World has been in business since 1972. And in actual fact, this year is our 50th anniversary. My goodness, where does time fly? We have offices all over the world through our uh, partner company of SGI, Sakara International uh, Group. Um, they have offices in uh, both sides of the United States, uh, California and New Jersey, as well as Paris, Rome, London, Delhi, and Cairo. And, and through Sakara, we have uh, thousands of employees worldwide. And um, uh, Sakara owns hotels, riverboats, uh, bus lines, travel companies, and other travel-related services. Um, we as a company, Aventura World, are dedicated to bringing forth the treasures of the world to you. And there are so many treasures on this particular program, as there was for those people who went to Egypt with us. But there are treasures of the fabulous food uh, in, in Peru. You know, yes, you've got treasures visual like Machu Picchu, like Cusco, like many of the local indigenous tribes and the colorful weaving and outfits that they've got. But you've also got things such as more potato varieties than anywhere else in the world. I strongly encourage you, you know, on one of your uh, free, uh, the free time in, in Cusco, go to the local market, the main market. They have over 5,000 different varieties of potato in Peru. Something for everybody, everything from purple, yellow, green, orange, red. Oh, my goodness, there's so many different potatoes and so many treasures to see along the way. Um, another treasure is, yeah, meeting locals, going up to Miss Monet. It's the early bird discount tour. And I strongly encourage you to sign up early to take advantage of this tour. We'll be learning of the Mother Earth ceremony. We'll be right there at the foot of the Andes. The Andes looks right out on Miss Monet Village. Um, some people, if you wish to, you'll be able to join in the Mother Earth ceremony. I think it's a way that they get a bit of free gardening done because you have to dig a little bit to join the, the, the Mother Earth ceremony. You have to turn a little bit of soil and put a bit of seeds in there but it's a fabulous experience to see an, an experience a self-sustaining community in the Andes. Many other things like that we'll discuss along the way. We're the official travel partner of, um, of ACCE, the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives. We're proud to, of that partnership. We follow their standards of quality and codes of ethics. And this is how I met Will many, many years ago, I think at, at, at a chamber conference in Louisville, Kentucky of all places. Um, and the, the, the Cayman Islands Chamber is a member of that organization. Now we're a wholesaler of travel, not a travel agent. And I make that important distinction. And uh, that uh, as a wholesaler of travel, we contract directly at the source. Um, hotels, airlines, bus companies, guides, restaurants, sites along the way. By doing that, we have no middlemen. So we offer great value for money without deterring or, or uh, affecting the quality at all. We're a company of, uh, that has changed uh, in recent years and, and changed with the times. And I'll discuss one of the ways we have changed since the last time I stood in front of you talking about Egypt or Peru. Um, and it's regarding how can you reserve this trip with peace of mind of gaining a refund? And we'll discuss that momentarily uh, as we get into the reservation section. But it's one of the ways we've changed in the current environment. 
Lastly, we class ourselves as the leader in value price first class four star programs in the United States. I know you're not in the United States, but um, I hope you agree with this statement when you see everything that's included with the, inc uh, with the included features of the program. Now, here we are, off we go. And we're just gonna let Jim in there. Um, so here we are right in front of Machu Picchu. It's a great time to be heading into this region. Very soon, uh, they're going to be looking of closing Machu Picchu. After you've returned home though, they're going to be closing it and making it just a viewing platform as we're looking at right now. But right now you can head in with our expert uh, tour guide and see everything that Machu Picchu has to offer instead of just looking from a, a viewing platform and having somebody point this and this out to you. You'll be able to see the irrigation system, which works really well in today's day and age. I know it because uh, I've been the, to Machu Picchu quite a few times. One of the times it was raining. So the irrigation system works beautiful in, in, in pipes, aqueducts, via, uh, and, and uh, waterfalls, uh, fountains, all the way off of the mountain itself. It's spectacular. October the 22nd. That's the, the date that you can put an X on your calendar. I am going to Peru. We've got a shot of the brochure. I think anybody that's in the chamber building might have a copy of that in front of them. It's on the website, the chamber's website. Um, importantly, you don't have to be from Cayman to go on this trip. You might have family, friends across on the in the United States. Let them know you're going. We'd be happy to assist them uh, to go on this trip with you. They can get hold of the chamber. Uh, uh, or uh, and uh, communicate, fill out the registration form, get it over to the chamber, and we'll be able to take care of them from their gateway, uh, wherever it is. Uh, we have people traveling us from Australia on our programs every year, from Europe every year, uh, from Canada, and, and of course, uh, people from the Cayman Islands and other areas in the Caribbean. So there's a copy of the brochure, and you will see here, uh, right there at the bottom, you'll see Kerry's contact details. We'll talk more about Kerry, but she is your contact. As a wholesaler, we work directly with the chamber. Any questions that you might have, get hold of Kerry, uh, and, and she'll be able to answer them. If she can't, she'll come back to us, and, and we'll answer them uh, through Kerry. So off we go. Let's head out now to, to Peru. What this program is, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to bring culture and history far different than home. Um, it is truly a land of surprise. It's going to bring colonial history, spectacular architecture, stories of gold and conquistadors, um, meeting of the local tribes people, You'll find uh, the Inca nation uh, inhabitants throughout the area with their multicolored embroidery, with their, uh, their uh, lovely woolen knitted items, llamas, uh, uh, goats, sheep. Uh, you'll find all over it's a very, very uh, unusual destination. Now, where is Peru? Of course, it's in the Southern hemisphere. Uh, it's uh, below the equator, um, and Peru, Peru is round about uh, two times the size of Texas, so it is a big, big country, a population, however, of only 31 uh, to, to about 32 million people now. Uh, it's on Central Standard Time, and the official language is Spanish. However, having said that, most people in Lima and Cusco do speak English. And this is our program, into Lima, out of Lima. Along the way, we'll be going to these green arrows, into Cusco, into Machu Picchu, the second green arrow. And for those people who are looking to extend, we'll be going to Lake Titicaca and to Puno, right here um, uh, to the south of, of, um, uh, of of Machu Picchu and Cusco. Spectacular uh, scenery as we go from Cusco by motor coach into uh, Puno. Unbelievable scenery. 
Now, you'll depart on the 22nd from Cayman Islands, bound for Mar Miami on Cayman Air right now. Upon arrival, now we can only use the, car the, the services that are currently present. It's a morning flight and it's a, a, it's a late afternoon flight to Peru from Miami. So once you arrive into Miami, you will pick up your luggage uh, and go to the curbside and you'll have all this information and you'll grab a, a shuttle bus to an airport hotel where we have provided for you a day room to relax, take it easy. Hypothetically, give or take, you'll be arriving around about 9.30 um, into Miami and then you'll be leaving round about six o'clock in the evening. So we didn't want to leave you hanging at the airport with nothing to do. You can go over there. You can watch your soap operas or, or just relax in a hotel room. Uh, maybe go to a pool and relax and start your program of relaxation and then head back to the airport that evening to check into your flight. Um, and we'll be departing, as I say, um, and, and uh, or down heading south to Peru. Now, historically, um, and on welcome to Peru on day two, and not much after uh, midnight, we'll be arriving to the capital city of Lima, full of history, full of colonial architecture. And we'll be arriving into uh, our hotel, the Garden Inn. It's a brand new hotel in Miraflores. Miraflores is the main section where you'll find lots of great shops, lots of great restaurants and bars close to the coastline itself. Now, historically, we're going to arrive to, um, to, um, to um, the, the hotel. Um, you know, uh, well, we're gonna land just after midnight um, uh, on day two, so we'll be, heading as soon as we've collected our luggage, we've met our tour director and such things as that, we'll be heading to the hotel. Now the hotel has everything you need. It's close to John F. Kennedy Park. It has uh, a pool inside, Wi-Fi, uh, restaurants, bars, um, and it's in the Miraflores San Isidro district. And again, as I mentioned, a very new hotel just opened this past May. And here we can see the rooms, um, either queen size beds or twin bedded rooms. Friendly and efficient staff and management um, and a great location for our stay here in uh, Lima. The first night, again, we're arriving in the morning, the early hours of, the, of day two. Maybe rest up, head to bed, sleep a little late, get up in time for breakfast and relax that morning because of your arrival of your flight. Then in the afternoon, we'll have the first part of our city tour. Um, our city tour has been broken up into two uh, uh, half day tours instead of just one full day because of your arrival time. We'll, but we'll be heading by a motor coach and with our uh, 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 tour director who has forgotten more about this destination than we will ever know we'll be seeing the main cosmopolitan and business district, heading into the main square, uh, where you'll find that the, the, the governor's palace. Um, we'll be seeing Justice's palace along the way, the cathedral and the bishop's palace. Now this area is famous for its um, hanging uh, balconies. You can see a great example of the wooden balconies, the hand carved balconies here on the cathedral itself. These were designed so, so people could uh, look down into the street below and look through the, the carved uh, lattice work of the windows without being seen from people down below. And you'll even see it in residential homes as you go through uh, Peru. We'll continue into the cathedral itself. We'll see murals and we'll learn the history of the conquistadors um, and the the Spanish colonialism, will, and here's a better shot of the, uh, the balconies themselves. We'll head into the, the Monastery of San Francisco with its main quadrangle. Some of these tiles, as you look down here, were brought over from Spain 
during uh, the early colonialism of uh, Peru. This is an outdoor museum and you can see spectacular murals, uh, hand-painted tiles and such things as that. We'll continue on into the chapel um, of the, the monastery and down underneath the grates that we can see here, there's be, where I, really just behind where I'm stood here taking this photograph, the steps that take you down to uh, the, the crypt. And that's where you'll find the, uh, the, uh, the tomb with all the, the skulls, the skeletons and such things as that, which are, uh, are part of the, the walls spectacular period. We'll continue on to the San Isidro district, the main business district. Uh, we'll come back to the hotel, rest up. I strongly encourage you, head out to a local restaurant in Miraflores. You will find the seafood is unbelievable. The corn, this might sound crazy, but the corn is unbelievable. They have corn that's the size of a grape, um, whether it's a purple corn or a a yellow corn is the sweetest thing you've ever tasted. And they have a, a, a drink made out of corn too. But sample some of the local cuisine. The next day, we will have a half day tour to the Lorado Museum. Um, Rafael Lorado Heredia made a collection and it was made into a museum of the Inca gold and Inca artifacts. And again, with your private tour director and guide, you'll be heading through this area and seeing and through the museum and seeing its treasures. It's set within beautiful gardens, um, but the collection is second to none in uh, South America. That evening we'll come back. And again, I strongly encourage you to head out there and sample that cuisine. Um, yes, the seafood is excellent. The next day, we'll find ourselves leaving uh, the coastline behind, jumping on an aircraft um, and taking about an hour and 15 minute flight across to Cusco. We'll be crossing the Andes and looking down at mountainous roads, small villages, a very sparsely populated but beautiful area as you fly over, arriving into Cusco. Cusco is an oasis in the mountain area and you come around um, and you can see Cusco from the air, come around all the way around and then land at Cusco Airport. And our home is the Garden Inn in Cusco. It's a great hotel overlooking Cusco itself. It holds spectacular views down into the valley below. Typical Cusco uh, Andalian architecture, a main quadrangle in the middle, high ceilings, um, a warm and inviting friendly staff, restaurants, bars, great rooms with twin uh, queen size beds. There are a couple of king size beds in the hotel too. But as you look through the lobby window, now you can see across the valley floor into Cusco and you can see Campa Church, the main square, all from uh, this area. Importantly, private bathrooms, uh, showers, baths, toiletries, safe box, um, ironing boards uh, and irons, flat screen TVs with, dire, uh, with satellite channeling, all the modern conveniences of home on all our hotels you'll find, even in Aguas Caliente. Um, the next day we'll find ourselves touring Cusco. And here we are in the main square at Compa Church, as we can see right here. Compa Church has survived many, many earthquakes. You'll learn of its construction. This is its construction. The main supports is wood and reeds. The reeds over the years allow it to move sideways to sideways. That's why it survived all the earthquakes. Here we've got the new church at the side, which is actually older than the Compa Church, but here we are in the main square. And shall I say, once you arrive in Cusco, you'll to coin the phrase, you'll know you're no longer in Kansas because you'll find many local tribes, people coming in from outer lying areas to buy food, 
to sell their wares. You'll find people in wonderful outfits, multi a little bit like what you'll find behind me in my shot here. People walking around, spectacular photographic opportunities, but it's a very safe destination. And our hotel is only a hop, skip and a jump from the main square itself. Um, here we are at Compa Church, as I mentioned. We'll go into the Compa Church. We'll see some areas that have uh, bed over the years, and you'll see the reed construction, which hold the main supports together. Here we are, the, again, famous balconies of, of Peru, less decorative in this case, and it's a great opportunity. This is the focal point and the cultural center, the main square of Cusco, and I strongly encourage you while you're here, yes, sit down on one of these park benches and just watch the world go by. Now, while we're here too, we go to this place. Now, I could say, try and get your tongue around that word that's there. Now, funnily enough, there's an easy way. And if you look at it very closely, um, you can see right here, it says sexy. And let me, oh, I apologize. Sexy woman. That's the way that is pronounced in local dialect. I'm assassinating it because local dialect, they say, but if you do see sexy woman, you know you've been to the ruins, which overlooks Cusco itself. Now, this photograph does not do it justice, but this is one of the, this place is one of the things that, like the pyramids, for those people who went to Egypt, this defies all logic how this was made. Take a look at this main stone here. This is a huge stone. You can look here, these, these are about four foot. These steel um, uh, railings are about four foot high. You're looking at about a 10 to 12 foot piece of stone, which is carved to fit exactly without mortar or concrete. And all throughout this, this fortification, you'll find rocks like this. It's on the top of a, a mountain overlooking Cusco itself. How did they do this? They still don't know in today's day and age how this was constructed. But here you can see it's a great mosaic. No rock is the same. They all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And it is unbelievable to see it. It's also great to look down uh, on the town itself. And here we are, you can see down there into the main square itself. Great views. Whilst you're here, I strongly encourage you to do your bit of shopping. No need to take gloves or sweaters or hats with you. Um, you can get them there if you feel a little bit nippy. You'll find great knitted items, uh, scarves, shawls, um, and such things as that. Statues, carved uh, ornamental items and such things as that. And here we've got great photo opportunities whilst there. Um, and all these are photographs that I took whilst I was there. While we're here in Cusco, we'll have a, a, a dinner and a folkloric show. We're learning of the folklore of the Andes. There'll be song, there'll be dance, there'll be costumes. And it's a wonderful experience. You even, and I hate, you know, I, uh, if there's some animal lovers amongst us, Please close your ears. But you have the opportunity to eat guinea pig whilst you're here too. Guinea pig is a delicacy and it's bread as, uh, as a food source. So if you wish to, you can try guinea pig um, in Cusco and even in this evening as we, as we uh, 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 eat at our uh, show. Now, the Sacred Valley. The sacred valley really is as it said, it is purely sacred. The scenery you'll see here is second to none. The people that you will see, again, to coin the phrase, you're no longer in Kansas. We will leave um, Cusco behind and head uh, into the lower Andes, arriving through into the, the, the terraced mountains of the Mismane area. Uh, of the sacred valley uh, where we'll see llamas, agora sheep, um, livestock grazing with shepherds, um, and we'll be into a madras known for its salt. It's, the salt has been farmed as it has been farmed for centuries. It's still the said same way. 
through terraces. It's known for its pink salt, natural salt. And here you can see some of the terraces. For those people who've been to Turkey and Pamukkale, it's very reminiscent of the Turkish scenery of Pamukkale. After that, we'll go to Mismene. This is a photograph that I took in 2018. Mismene is an authentic village. This is not touristic in any shape or form. We are invited to come to their village. This is a, a brother and it is his sister. Uh, and, and they're there to allow us to see their life, to learn of their way of life. When we arrive uh, along a dirt road, They'll be waiting, all the village people and the village elder will be waiting for us. And here they are um, with musical instruments, playing music. And we go to the main um, community hall and we learn about their way of life. We have lunch here. It's a self-sustaining um, community. Anything that you buy here stays within the in the. Uh, within the, uh, the village. It's some of the cheapest drinks you'll find anywhere in the world because yes, they, they basically sell them virtually for cost, a little bit of profit, but inexpensive beers, inexpensive sodas, and very inexpensive um, uh, we, uh, cut, uh, weave it, weaved items and woolen items but we're here to learn a little bit about the Mother Earth ceremony. Um, and with the Andes in the background, and you can see some of the glaciers in the background, spectacular views. You'll find people working the fields, you'll find um, uh, animals all throughout the area, and they'll take us through the Mother Earth ceremony. As I mentioned, you get the opportunity, they get a bit of free labor out of us if you wish, uh, as you turn the earth and you become part of the Mother Earth ceremony. It's a real fun event. We'll then learn about how uh, the wool is made from the sheep in the, uh, in the village itself, from spinning of the wool to using the, the natural coloring of onions and minerals from the mountains and various other things to make these vibrant colors. And if anybody wishes, it's an educational factor, but if anybody wishes to, you can buy here. Now, dependent on the time and, and the, when we get there and on the, the will of the local uh, school district, our intent is to go to a local school here. Sometimes we can, sometimes we cannot. There's no rhyme or reason in a rural Andal uh, uh, Andean community whether we can or cannot. Our intent is to try our best to get there. If we can, we'll have a wonderful experience learning of, yes, uh, the issues of education in a small community, interviewing the local kids and such things as that. And they usually put a wonderful performance on for us too. We'll come back, back to the hotel, relax, maybe head into Cusco for an evening and the next day, We'll be heading to Machu Picchu. We will be leaving uh, uh, um, Cusco for the evening. We're going to ask you to, to pack a, an overnight bag, a rucksack, or a hold all as we go to uh, Machu Picchu uh, and Aguas Caliente for the, the, the for a two day, one night period. But this is what we should be seeing. Um, in the morning, we'll be going to the train station um uh, to to catch the uh Machu Picchu Express um and boarding the train and it's uh the uh, the main um uh, visit dome so you get large windows along the side as well as windows uh, uh skylights on the roof too so you can see spectacular scenery at an eye level but also above you too now you can't really see it but there is a hotel Ask your tour director to point out the hotel in this rock face. It's not for everybody because you must be a rock climber to get to the hotel as it is held on there by steel uh, wires. That's the rooms are held on by steel wires and you have to rock climb to get to it as it's positioned right on the rock face itself. But you'll be heading through spectacular canyons, raging waters, waterfalls and such until you arrive 
into Aguas Calientes. Aguas Calientes is, is what I envisioned the old Western uh, town to be. The rail track went right through the center of town and in Aguas Calientes, it still goes right through the center of town. The vendors move their, their stalls while the train comes in and we go right into the center. There are no cars, no nothing here um, for, for getting about, but it's a very small place. Our hotel here is the El Mapa. Um, and it's right there uh, in the heart of Aguas Caliente. One of the beauties of this is you'll get many people coming in to see Machu Picchu on the train. But when the last train di disappears at round about four o'clock in the afternoon, it becomes quiet. You're here, and there's only so many people that can get into Machu Picchu. So you're there, you'll find the Raging River at the, the backside of our hotel. You'll find the, the mountains and the, the jungle right there. You'll find bird life, animal life, and it is very serene. Um, and it's a great place to relax and just, oh my goodness, experience Aguas Caliente. Um, lovely rooms. Everything that you'll need, you know, yes, we're in Aguas Caliente um, at the foot of uh, Machu Picchu, but you'll find you've got twin uh, uh, queen size bedded rooms, you've got private bathrooms, uh, air conditioning, heat, um, your restaurants, bars, Wi Fi, mini bar, coffee makers, cordless telephones, and safe boxes. There's even a small pool there. Uh, in the hotel, but it's right in the center of town. And, and I encourage you to wander that evening. But the reason we're here is to come here to, to Machu Picchu. Um, we no need to walk there. We're not taking a trekking uh, program. We'll either take the gondola or a minibus to the staging point of um, the, uh, the entrance to Machu Picchu. And then with your private tour director to guide, you'll head through Machu Picchu. You'll, you'll learn of its history. You'll learn of um, the spec, how long it took the Inca. There's only one Inca. Inca. That was the real, the, the, the leader of the, the Inca nation. So you'll learn how it, long it took the Inca to walk to this summer palace. You'll learn of its discovery and its excavation and you'll drink in the beauty of this site um, and, and just be in awe of its terrace work. It's the way that the, the construction uh, of the buildings is, again, without concrete, all the stones fit perfectly. Uh, as you can see here, um, it's a spectacular. From here, you'll look down into Aguas Caliente and there it is down the valley floor into Aguas Caliente. Um, for those people interested, yep, that night, so after your tour, that night, the, um, you've got uh, a night to relax in, in Aguas Caliente, maybe try uh, some of the local liquors, um, and if you're interested, the next day, uh, your tour director can arrange for you to go to Machu Picchu to watch the sunrise. We don't include it. Because of course, sunrise isn't always possible if it's cloudy. So this should be a, a good indication whether it's going to be worth your while and you can talk to your, your tour director to visit a spiritual period as sunrise on uh, Machu Picchu. We'll come back in the uh, roundabout just after lunchtime, back to, uh, on the train, back to Cusco and, and the rest of the day, and the next day is a free day in Cusco, time to do some shopping, head to that local market, meet the locals, um, buy those gifts. I'm not really sure how much use you're going to get out of a, a woolly sweater or a hat on the Cayman Islands, but it's a great souvenir to bring back. Head to the local markets. I strongly encourage you. Here you can just see a, a brief sample of the different potatoes, but you'll see spiky potatoes. You'll see the green potatoes. You'll see pure purple and uh, vibrant red potatoes, vibrant orange potatoes. Um, uh, great things just to wander through the main municipal market of Cusco.
Now, while you're at it, as I mentioned, animal lovers put your uh, earmuffs on here. You can, if you wish, try your hand at a guinea pig. And there's a guinea pig in its entirety right there. Tastes a little bit like chicken. Tastes a little, I grew up with guinea pigs. It was a little bit difficult for me, but it's, you know, one of the beauties of travel is you will learn of cultures. You will learn of different aspects of travel. Travel is an education and it's a privilege. And just to see something like this, whether you taste it or not, it's a true education. And I love travel for that. Um, last night, relax, take it easy, visit the locals. And then, yes, what does this program bring forth? It brings forth a uh, uh, round trip transportation from the Cayman Islands um, and internal flights within Peru. We have first class accommodations for eight nights, three nights in, in uh, Lima. Uh, we, uh, we class one of the nights in there because we are guaranteeing you early arrival at, you know, from midnight uh on on day two so we have to pay for the night in advance so it's three nights in lima it's uh four nights in cusco and one night in aguas caliente um we've got plus your day rooms at either end a day room in uh, going from cayman to miami and also a day room from uh, peru uh, uh, uh miami and then onwards to uh to cayman uh we have um round trip uh, train on the scenic uh, Vista Dome train for, to Aguas Caliente. We've got um, nine breakfasts and three dinners, total of 12 meals. We've got all your sightseeing. As long as you uh, sign up before the early bird discount exp uh, expires, there are no optional tours on this particular program. So you get a uh, city tour of Lima, you get a city tour of Cusco, you get sexy uh, woman, uh, fortress, you get Machu Picchu, Aguas Caliente, and uh, that early bird uh, uh, tour of the Sacred Valley and Miss Manet. We get our cultural discovery series, visiting Miss Manet um, and, and other aspects. We've got uh, a tour director on the program from arrival in uh, Lima, just waving goodbye either in Lima or in, uh, in Puno. We have the whisper systems, those um, headsets that you'll wear so you can hear, hear the tour director guide uh, throughout the program itself. We have deluxe air conditioned motor coaches, uh, large buses in, in Lima, smaller buses in Cusco because of the narrow streets, large buses can't get through um, the, the colonial style streets of Cusco. Um, we've got baggage handling for one piece of luggage <coughs> from arrival in um, um, po uh, 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 Peru onwards all the way back to Miami. Um, now the price of the program is in US dollars, it's 38.95, including all the above, including air out of Cayman. Um, this is an early, that's a member price. A non-member price uh, is $200 a person, uh, sorry, $150 a person more. Uh, at 40, 45, uh, double occupancy. Single occupancy is $6.99 a person. At $6.99, you can watch whatever you want to in the uh, hotel room each evening. You don't have to argue what you want to watch. It's your choice. Um, so the, the fuel surcharges and taxes are included in the price, $350 and $150, uh, respectively. Now, this is an early bird discount price. As long as you reserve your spot on or before June the 3rd. Okay, after June the 3rd, it goes up by a hundred dollars to um, 3995 or 4145. And if you wish to go on the Sacred Valley it's an additional $129. So reserving before or on the uh, June the 3rd will save you 229 US dollars. Now, please, um, with the amount we've got right now, we have about, we had about 27 people 
on the webinar and I'm looking at the room. It's hard to see how many is in the room, but I'm going to say there's at least 25 people there. Please try your best not to wait until the early bird expires or early bird date to reserve this trip. To avoid disappointment, not if, but when this trip sells out and it is going to sell out, we're looking for one bus right now. One bus is about 40 people. So as soon as that bus fills up, we have to get 10 to 20 people before we open up a second bus and second tour director and guide. So if you want to be on the first bus and on the trip to avoid disappointment, sign up sooner than later. <coughs> now, visas, we do have a state in there that says, um, you know, it doesn't include visas. Now, we can't tell what passports you're holding, but from working with you in the past, uh, the, the Cayman Island traveler is a little bit like a United Nation traveler. There's more passport holders on there. You get your Cayman uh, passport holders. You get other Caribbean nation passport holders. You might have US passport holders. From what we have found, nobody uh, in the Caribbean, unless you have holding a Cuban passport, um, will need to have a visa to get into Peru, but we strongly encourage you to check with your passport issuing office just to make sure to be on the safe side. Okay, so as we move on, yes, we depart for home um, on this day. And again, as I mentioned, uh, we arrive in Miami, uh, depart for Cayman in the, we'll be arriving in the morning and, and departing for Cayman on Cayman Airlines uh, in, the, in the afternoon, so we provided a day room again. Now, a lot of people say, hey, I'm already there, I wanna extend. And about 70% of all our travels extend. This is an unbelievable experience, the extension to Puno uh, on Lake Titicaca, one of the largest lakes uh, in the region. We'll be leaving Cusco, heading by motor coach, passing through small villages and towns, arriving to the main settlement on Lake Titicaca, which is Puno. We'll check into our hotel. We'll have a city tour, seeing the main cathedral. Puno is a small area, great place to wander, great place to take, it, take a, an experience. The reason we're coming here not only is, is to, to experience Lake Titicaca, but to visit the Uro Nation. The Uru Nation are, are people that live off on the lake and off the lake, on land that they have built, land that they have constructed from taking the reeds from the lake and making hard ground, floating ground. Not only do they make the ground they walk on, they make their housing and their boats from this too. And here's one of their boats that, fabulous piece of engineering, the buoyancy. And again, take a look at this. This is how they kept the Compa Church up. Very heavily bound reed structures is part of the, the, uh, the main supports of the, the Compa Church in, in Cusco. We'll be visiting the, 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 the locals, learning about their way of life, learning about life on the, the floating islands, how the islands are made, how their, their, their main um, uh, structures are built. Um, and it's a great interaction between you and local people. Here we are on the islands itself. Before we know it, we'll have spent time in Cusco and we'll be departing back to, from uh, the, the, the local airport, back to Lima for an overnight flight to um, Miami. Again, Miami arrive in the morning, We'll head into a, a day room, uh, rest up, take it easy, and your flight to the Caymans will be heading out um, in the, uh, in the uh, late afternoon, early evening. Now, what will we get on this particular program? Uh, we get round trip, we get coach transportation from Cusco to Puno. We've got two nights in a first class hotel. We've got uh, uh, daily breakfast, uh, either buffet or full and two lunches. We've got uh, Oro and Tucre Islands. We've got baggage handling. We've got a professional tour director on the program. 
deluxe air conditioning, more to coaches and local taxes. Six ninety nine US dollars per person double occupancy. Nine ninety eight single supplement. How do we sign? Nearly, I'm, I'm not far off. I, uh, I'm nearly coming to the end, and then I can start answering your questions. If you've got any uh, chats, if you're online, you can start putting them in there. I see we've got about four questions right now, but you can start putting them in there. But this is how we sign up. As I mentioned earlier at the start of the presentation, you'll see Kerry's contact, name and contact details here. Once you've filled out your registration form, if you don't walk it in, you can email it to, to, to Kerry or walk it in if you'd like. Mail it in to the chamber if you'd like. They will then get the, 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 the registration over to us in New Jersey. But this is the this is the way that we're going to use. It's really easy. I'm not going to dwell too long on this, but it asks for your name as it appears in your passport. If your passport's expired or you don't have one right now, don't wait to get your passport before you reserve. Give us your name as it appears in the expired passport. Uh, first name, middle initial, middle name if there is one, last name, your date of birth, your passport number, if it's valid, um, country of issue, an expiration date. To be able to be allowed into Peru and the United States, you're going to have to have six months left on your passport from your last day of the program. So the United States will ask for the last day of the arrival into the United States, six months. Peru will ask for six months of the last day in uh, in Peru. Um, your email address, oh, sorry, your, your, your mailing address, I'm sorry, city or town, state, uh, uh, a zip code, really that, some of that might not belong to you, uh, but it would be postcode in there, please. Um, and then email address. If you, when you're filling out this form, please use your Sunday best handwriting, please. Because I know Carrie and our team would be most appreciative if you did so. If you have handwriting like what I have, it's impossible to read. So Sunday best handwriting and block capitals as well, if you wouldn't mind, especially for your email address. Um, because that's the way you'll gain notifications of, of payments, uh, invoices, monies received and et cetera, such as that. Home phone number cell phone number. Then we've got single. Yes, if you'd like single occupancy, tick that box. It's $6.99. Double occupancy. Now, circle that. There are some hotels that have queen and king on this program. We'll do our best. If you circle double, we'll do our best to get those for you. Um, if you want twins, there you go. Voila, circle twin. And who are you sharing the room with? We need one registration form per passenger. So John and Alice Smith are going on this trip. John's going to fill out one of these and he'll indicate Alice Smith who is he sharing the room with. And then Alice will fill one out and indicate John she's sharing the room with. So we can cross reference who's traveling with whom. Um, then we got notes. Anything you need us to know about you as a, as a traveler, let us know. Dietary items. Yeah, we can. With advance notice, we can handle dietary items. Uh, low sodium, fat free, gluten free, all that stuff can be done as long as we know in advance. Um, if you're traveling with friends and you'd like to have rooms close to each other, we can't always guarantee next door, but close to each other, have put in their rooms close to, uh, uh, for example, John Smith and have John Smith do the said same thing with you too. Um, anything that we need. Then the chamber is going to check if you remember or not. And they'll tick that box or you tick that box so that you get the correct pricing. Now, optional to us. Now we have a worksheet that's going to assist you with this particular process. So and it'll come to calculate the trip in a moment. But with the deposit, um, you, if you wish to, uh, there's, you'll find indicated here, Sacred Valley is free as long as you sign up on or before June the 3rd. If you don't want it, if you're violently opposed to going to the Sacred Valley, tick no. You've got it free anyhow. Uh, but if you don't want it, just tick no. After um, June the 3rd, 
if you want to go there, you'll drop in here $129. Puno extension. Yes, if you would like Puno extension, it's $6.99 a person. Drop $6.99 in there if it's double occupancy. And this is all part of a worksheet so you can understand how much the price of the trip, which is going to come to calculating the trip. We have four different columns here. Two columns if you sign up on or before June the 3rd. One if you sign up after. The only difference is, is member, non-member, and the trip goes up by $100 after June the 3rd. Uh, June the 3rd. So I'm going to say here, okay, it's before. So optional, so I'm filling up and I happen to be a member just for the sake of this evaluation. So I'm going to drop in there. It's 38. I'm double occupancy, 38. Um, uh, 95. Because I'm signing up before uh, the uh, early bird expires, there is no cost to, to drop in here because I'm getting it free of charge and I've ticked yes. Do I want, am I single? No, I'm not. So I don't, I put a, a zero in here. Do I want to go to uh, uh, Puno? Yes, I do. I'm going to put 699 in there. Total up all these and that's the price of the trip per person. Okay. Nice and easy. Non-members do the same thing. And if you sign up after that uh, section uh, of the early bid expires, the same thing applies. Now, to calculate the deposit, it's 600 US dollars per person to reserve your space, plus any optional tours, optional day tours. If you're signing up before on the early bird deadline date, you don't need to. So it's $600 just in there. Puno extension. Yes, I'm going, so I'll put the $6.99 in there, okay? And then there we've got it. Plus, plus, that's the amount of money per that you are authorizing either the, the personal, the check to be made out to, made out to the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce, um, or Visa or MasterCard. That's the amount that will be charged to your card. You don't need to, in this section, you could do John and Alice Smith. I could do two people here. So it's two people. So it's, if I make it easy, um, I'm just going to do the deposit. I could put $1,200 in here. I'm not going to Puno, $1,200 in there instead of $600. And that's the amount, Visa, MasterCard, or the check. Drop in your check, drop in the amount right here. The, uh, the drop in the credit card number, the security code, expiration date, the name on the card. Okay, get it over to the chamber. Nice and easy. As we move on, as I mentioned, this is a way that we want to bring peace of mind and we want to facilitate the ease of booking. We don't know where the world's going. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Never mind in October. But we want to give you the opportunity to say yes. I want to go, and yes, I want to reserve. And I can put an X on the calendar that I'm going to Peru uh, on October the 22nd. And one of the ways we, we did this, and we've learned over the last two years, is to try and limit the exposure that our travelers have. So from booking, if you decide to book tonight, all the way up to 131 days before you go, you get a full refund. No questions asked. You'll just get hold of Kerry or the chamber as long as it's uh, uh, within that 131 days before a departure. And you'll say, I don't want to go. And we will facilitate a refund. So you can book and reserve today, tomorrow, next week. Um, don't wait too long, remember. But uh, And you have the peace of mind and the power to get out of the trip and just see how the world goes. We're sure the world's still going to be here. We're sure we're going to get used to everything as we are getting used to everything. But that gives you some additional security. So as you go through, um, once you get in here, there's, there's the amount that's dropped in here you, uh, for the, the deposit amount, drop it in here down at the bottom, sign it, date it, and bring it over to the chamber. Uh, and we'll start working on the... Um, on the reservation once we release, re receive it. We certainly hope you'll join the chamber on a terrific travel year in 2022. And I'm gonna look to see if there's any um, questions online before I come to the people in the room. So uh, yeah, that's an older question. Yes, we've started. 
I'm excited uh, to be here. Thank you, Jane. And I'm happy you're excited. Uh, the temperature difference from day to night. Okay, great question. So we're going into a couple of different climates. We're in a very dry desert-like climate in, in Lima, going into a, shall we say a Western climate, Western uh, uh, temperate climate of uh, in Cusco and such things as that. Um, I've been in and out of this region in this particular period of time. We can expect, you know, sunny days in Lima uh, in the uh, 70s, historically 70s, mid 70s, low humidity. So when you're in the sun, it's, um, it's warm. When the sun goes down, it gets cool, almost like a Southern California climate. So light sweaters, no ski jackets, no, no uh, sheepskin coats, uh, anything like that you're not going to need, okay? If you need something like that, I guarantee you'll find fabulous knitted items all over that you can buy inexpensively. Um, once we get into Cusco, it's a very temperate. It doesn't seem to change too much uh, year in, uh, day in, day out, but we'll be in that mid-60s, mid uh, high 50s in the day, dropping down to low 50s, high 40s in the evenings. Again, nothing too, nothing too cold, nothing that you'll need uh, anything too heavy, but there's the cavalry close at hand in the shops, should you feel it, okay? I strongly encourage that you take a light uh, a raincoat just in case there's some liquid sunshine whilst you're there. Um, but um, that's really about it. I see there's a couple more questions that's come in. Um, okay. Um, how is the, 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 the travel company, which is us, handling COVID uh, rules and regulations? Right now, uh, the, the COVID rules and regulations are in flux. If I was to discuss right now, if it, if it stays exactly the same, which fingers crossed it doesn't, it seems to be a lot of lobbying going off. Europe is dropping all their COVID rules and regulations. Uh, Peru right now is requiring that you must have a test before you arrive. It's an antigen or a PCR test. If this still stays in effect, we'll be informing of you. But this is one of the reasons why we have that flexible cancellation policy, because you, you've got until 131 days to see how things go. Um, right now, uh, the US and COVID uh, and, and um, Peru are requiring vaccinations to get in there. But whether that still is there once, you, once we go, I don't know. It's beyond our pay grade. Again, that's why we want you to give you the opportunity of reserving and having the ability to get out. Um, on the return, if you should need to um, have a test to get back into the Cayman Islands and the US, we will arrange for that test on your behalf. Um, and we'll have a medical a company come into the hotel. They'll do the tests um, and in one clean sweep. And um, in um, you know, the, it's your responsibility to pay for it, but we will uh, organize it uh, on your behalf, okay? So um, other than that, there aren't really a whole host of protocols in, um, in um, Peru right now. Mask is not mandatory. Um, on the aircrafts, it's not mandatory uh, at this moment. So uh, it, it's, it's now starting to loosen very, very much. We've, we've been operating programs uh, since, uh, let me think now, June of 2021. So we've gone through all the different rules and regulations and we're constantly monitoring them and it's starting to ease up. What's the currency used uh, in Peru? It's the sol. The secondary uh, currency is the US dollar. And it's very unusual an ATM in Peru, you can pick uh, the Nuevo, the New Sun, the Nuevo Sol, or you can pick US dollars. Whatever you want to get out of the ATM, you can pick which one. Um, so it's it's one of those that you can use. Um, should travelers 
uh, by in, uh, should travelers insurance be considered? Should, should travel insurance be considered? Strongly, highly, must. I don't want to be really, I, I, I want to be very clear. You should have travel insurance in today's day and age, whether you're going to Peru, whether you're going to the United States, whether you're going to London, wherever you're going, I strongly encourage you buy travel insurance. It's the best thing that you could possibly buy. When you're buying travel insurance, please talk to whoever's providing it uh, to you that it covers COVID as a medical case. So if you get COVID before you go, um, you're covered because COVID is a medical event, okay? Uh, make sure that it does cover that. But, you know, make sure you have lost luggage, flight delays, trip cancellation, and all that type of stuff. Yes, I strong, I, I take, I, since, since the last 20 years, I've taken 60 international trips. Each year, I take out trip and uh, tr uh, travel insurance. I've used it twice. So in all aspects, I've wasted my money 58 times. I will not change it. I will buy, I'm going to Croatia in, uh, in August. I'm going to get travel insurance again because I've seen what happens when you don't have it. Walk into it, travel insurance, like you, you're going to waste your money on it because hopefully you do, fingers crossed, you waste your money on it um, because you're not going on this trip to say, well, Peru was great, but boy, that travel insurance was really great. It was the best thing I ever did. But when you do need travel insurance, it is the best thing you'll ever have. Um, uh, so credit cards are accepted everywhere throughout Peru, unless we're in Miss Manet, which is the Andalusian, uh, the, the, no, not the Andalus, the Andalian village, a self-sustaining community where Cachis rule, Cachis king. But you'll find uh, credit cards for all services are accepted throughout the program. Um, so um, anybody, we have seem to have exhausted if I haven't answered specifically online, drop in your text again. Uh, but any questions in the room now? Thanks, Ian, for the presentation. We'll open up to questions in the room, like you said. Um, I have friends in the company who would like to attend. Um, <coughs> Is the company able to do anything for them as far as getting them their care from where they live in Miami? You said friends from? There's somebody Yeah, Ian, the question is um, one of the people in the room have two friends from the Bahamas who would like to take the trip. Will you make the arrangements to uh, make that happen? Great question. Um, I'd have to default to our air team and find out how how difficult it is to get them from the Bahamas. I would say what I would say right now to you, Will, and to Kerry, have them sign up. Let's see what we can do. We'll communicate with you. Whether we can do it from the Bahamas or whether we do it from Miami, we'll let you know. But yes, we can help and we can help them. I don't know in this presentation, if I was to answer yes or no, I'd be a little dangerous. I have to default to our air team on scheduling and such things as that, but. I'm sure we can help them. Reserve, uh, I apologize, have them reserve. And if we, if we can't do everything, then we'll, we'll let Will and Kerry know and we'll come back to you, but I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to help them. Any comments on the altitude and preparations for people who may not be accustomed to it? Yes, yes. What, what I would say is pick the highest point in Cayman and, 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 and try and figure out, you know, do some heavy breathing, right? <laughs> no, all joke, all jest aside. So there are wonderful, wonderful things to help you with this. So we're not on a trekking program. We, we, we won't provide you a yak to put your luggage on. Um, you know, so we're in a relaxing program. Yes, we're going into some altitude. The highest place that will be is the optional day tour 
of the Sacred Valley. Um, Machu Picchu is just under 8,000 feet. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, Miss Manet is about 11 to 12,000 feet. Now, I place football, as we call it, or soccer over in the United States. I played soccer in Miss Manet. I played maybe 10 seconds against some little kids that were about six years old and they were running rings around me because of altitude. But there are ways that you can do this. In Cusco, it's about 9,000 feet. We go to Cusco to acclimatize. And then we, we, we then go over into the Sacred Valley and it's a little higher. We come back and we go to, to uh, Machu Picchu, which is lower. So we plan the program about this. Now, there are things called liquid oxygen, small aerosol canisters, the size of this that you can spray into your mouth. It sprays oxygen directly into your mouth and it, bring, it builds up the oxygen inside, um, inside your blood. There are, um, there are um, other medications that you can go. Go to the local pharmacy and say, I'm going to Peru. Can you prescribe me altitude tablets? Take the altitude tablets before you go. You shouldn't have an issue. On a, on a holistic format, try not to eat as much as you normally would because altitude is going to slow your system down and eating large and heavy meals can often create altitude issues. So with your liquid oxygen, which you can get on uh, Amazon, and I bet even in many of the places, if you can order it uh, on the island, I, I don't think they'll sell a lot of it on the island, but um, you'll be able to get it online. But should you need it, each of our hotels in, um, in uh, Aguas Caliente and in Cusco have oxygen uh, cylinders. You'll just call through to the hotel reception desk or your tour director and they will deliver an oxygen cylinder to you and you'll be able to uh, take advantage of the oxygen with a with a, a, a new face mask that they'll provide there are other uh, peruvian ways the coca tea is a great way to do it again that's a digestive uh, digestive tea the only thing i say is if you work for a company that does create drug tests on your return, you might have a, a trace of cocaine in your system if you have coca tea. So do keep that in mind as it is, it is the, the leaf. It is the leaf. So in the rawest format, and it's made with tea. So there are many ways I've been there. You, when you get off of the plane, you'll feel that something's not quite right. You'll feel that, hey, what is this? What is this? And it's just the altitude. But if you've done your job right, you've taken the, the tablets, you've got the liquid uh, uh, um, uh, oxygen in, in a spray format, I don't think you'll have any issues at all. Preparation, preparation is the greatest thing in that sense. Yeah, any other questions? I'm so the oxygen bars, there was one online, the oxygen bars. I don't know if there's oxygen bars per se, but there's oxygen cylinders at the hotel. Extension question, hold on, Ian. Uh, yeah. Is that different than photo Google, where they have the, the ink spot, or is it the same place? <laughs> Um, yeah. Questions about whether it's the H, the Puno, is that uh, the same as where the H, H, blocks. H blocks are? The Puno Puco? The, Puno Puco? the H blocks. We're 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 going to be in Peru, not in Bolivia, because they're You're not in Bolivia. Yes. Yeah. Talking about the chamber, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have online banking 
facility so you can pay online. So I think this is saying the 21st to the 31st. Right. If you um, add the extension on how many more days? How many more days is the extension added on to the 31st, Ian? The, the, the days of the extension, and I apologize because I couldn't see it, but the, the extension, you will return back to Cayman on the 2nd. So on, on the 2nd, you will arrive in the morning and reconnect with a flight to Cayman on the 2nd. You'll be back in the, in the afternoon of the 2nd. Um, so, so the, while while you look for another one, there's one about medical, and and I apologize. I I know you're all going to know this. Uh, for example, Brit K uh, Insurance, uh, uh, Generali, etc. You would is that good in Peru? I can't tell you specifically about that. What I would recommend is call and talk to those uh, uh, medical insurance if it's a local. Uh, Cayman policy, probably not, uh, but talk to them. And if it's not, grab a travel insurance policy that will cover you. Next question. Is there enough time to do outside excursions if you want to do one? I don't know where you're talking about. The Nazca, the, Nazca, Nazca the Nazca lines. Well, the Nazca lines, the only way it can be done is by aircraft. So yes, it is. It can be done from Pono. So as soon as you arrive, you would have to talk to your tour director and double check. Um, so it's, it's, it's a full, if you want to do the Nazca lines, it's a full day. So you'd have to forego something in Pono to, to accomplish that. Because it, 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 I mean, they're spectacular, as well as the painted mountains, uh, again, from Cusco, but they're, they're too far to do in a day um, by coach. You have to fly there. So it's possible. Yes, it is. Well, I'd like to thank everyone online for watching this presentation. Well, well there's a couple more online. Oh, okay. uh, just, uh, just um, so, what are the protocols if if anybody falls ill? It's the same anywhere in the in the uh, the world. You know, uh, if you fall ill on one of our programs, um, we'll have we'll seek medical advice. You'll contact your tour director. Um, we'll we'll seek medical advice, and 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 um, hopefully it's nothing serious. You'll receive medical advice. Um, if you have to stay behind, you won't be alone, uh, but you'll have an emergency number with us. You'll have an emergency number within Peru, and we'll get you home whenever the emergency is over with. Um, how much walking? Not a whole host of walking on our programs. So we cater to uh, the, the 55 and above historic marketplace. Um, so the only real walking on this program is going to be Machu Picchu um, as such. Everything else is going to be relatively easy walking. And again, we take our time. Um, we do keep in mind there will be some cobbles. There will be some uneven surfaces. Um, but, um, you know, we're not doing the Inca Trail or something such as that. Um, and um, so not a lot of walking. Um, uh, can we repeat the date of the departure from Cayman and return date? So October 22 is the departure for came from Cayman and either you come back on October the 31st or November the 2nd. Do you need to declare allergies? Uh, if they're life and death threatening allergies, I recommend it. If they're not, just make sure that you have your allergy medication with you. You don't need to in that sense. Other than that, I think we've got it all. Thank you very much, Ian, for your great presentation. Uh, obviously, if there are any other questions that people have, you can always reach out to the chamber and we'd be more than happy to find out for you. So I'd like to thank everyone for um, 
tuning into this Zoom presentation. And thank you, Ian. We look forward to a wonderful trip. Hope you'll join us, everybody. It's a fabulous trip. Take care, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. What did you get?